The National Broadcasting Company presents The National Football League Today, from the Astrodome, it's the Cincinnati Bengals versus the Houston Oilers. Brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Budweiser. Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. And by AT&T, the right choice. Last Sunday night in the Astrodome, Warren Moon scored from three yards out to put Houston ahead of Pittsburgh 34 to 31. But then the Steelers came back an 80 yard touchdown drive in 80 plays. Brister to Hodge from 16 yards out. The touchdown with 20 seconds left. The Steelers upset the Oilers 37 to 34. The Cincinnati Bengals have been led all year by Boomer Esiason, the number one quarterback in the National Football League and Eddie Brown is his favorite receiver. Today it's a showdown in the Central Division. Cincinnati with a two-game lead over Houston and Cleveland. The earliest sellout crowd of the year here in the Astrodome today. For the Cincinnati Bengals as they come to the final two games, two wins, they have the division title and home field advantage as long as they are in the playoffs. For the Houston Oilers, two wins, possible division title, a cinch of the wild card and home field advantage for a wild card. Hello, everybody. I'm Charlie Jones, along with Jimmy Sevelo. And as Gail Gardner said, it was a devastating loss here in the Astrodome Sunday night for the Houston Oilers. It certainly was. Some observers have said that Oiler players did not forget that loss until Thursday. It's a very young Houston team. What they've got to learn is that in this league, in the NFL 16-game season, you've got to forget a loss just as quickly as a win. That has to happen on Monday morning. It's also a very important game for Cincinnati. It certainly is. Home field advantage throughout the playoffs might be at stake. Now, if you look into the history of the league, the past 13 AFC champions, 10 have won that title on their home turf. That's why it's important for Cincinnati. We'll take a look at the offense for the Houston Oilers, led by this man, Warren Moon, with Mike Rougier, Alonzo Highsmith, Drew Hill, Ernest Gibbons, and Jamie Williams, the receivers. That offensive line of Davis, Munchik, Pinnison, Mathis, and Dean Steinkuhler. Charlie, the center, as we take a look at the defensive front for the Bengals, Tim Crumry anchors this Bengal team, number 69 for the defense. In the middle of the field, it's very odd that a nose tackle would lead a squad in making tackles. He's done it the last three years. Here he is right in the middle of the pile again. Here. The reason it's tough is because clubs usually double and triple team nose tackles, but Crumry, with that lineup of linebackers behind him, has really been a force for the Bengals this year. But his second down and six. And Rogier on the draw, shut out left side, picks up the first down as he comes back to the right. And his momentum is going to carry him to the 41 yard line, a gain of 12 first down. The head coach of the Houston Oilers, Jerry Glanville, Houston's record is nine and five. Jerry. Rozier again shut out up the middle, this time jumps to the right, across the 50, Cincinnati 49-yard line. Be about a yard shy of the first down, David Fulcher with the tackle. It'll be third down and one. So it is Highsmith and Rozier in the backfield. Rozier bobbles the ball, Cincinnati says they have it, and they do. Big turnover early in the ballgame. The offensive look of the Bengals is Siason, Brooks, Woods, McGee, Brown, and Holman. And a look at the line, Munoz, Reimers, Kazerski, Montoya, Walter. Following a turnover, Cincinnati likes to go deep to strike immediately. Will they do it now? First part of the ballgame. They will play action fake to all the linebackers. He wants to go deep. And the pass is complete to the 31-yard line. There is a flag drop back at the 43, Eddie Brown. Holding 78 offense, first down. On Anthony Munoz, and he's in motion. It is tipped in the air, it is incomplete. It is going to be second down and 20. It is Richard Bird who made the play. Detroit, Chicago. And now ready to go very quickly. This is something you've got to watch. 
A little bit underthrown, but it is caught by Eddie Brown. You simply cannot dawdle when you do a Cincinnati ball game. They always go in their attack mode, trying to catch the defense with the wrong players on the field, or maybe 12 on the field. Moments notice and start a play, trying to catch the defense with 12 men on the field. This time they got caught. Third down and 20. Esiason slips away. Pump fake, steps away again, throws, it is high, and it is incomplete. This one sailed on him. Meanwhile, Chris Collinsworth wanted pass interference called. It was not called downfield. Oh, glad to get back on a strong offensive track again. Second and six. Good fake. Esiason and his sack. Sean Jones got it. They come with a handoff inside to Brooks. 17-yard line gain of four. It's going to be fourth down and 20. Here they come. And the kick is away. Taken at the 49-yard line by Duncan. And he returns to the 41-yard line. Ed Hill to the far side. Moon likes to throw outside. He gives to Rozier, who's been very effective. And he is to the 36 of the 37-yard line. Let's see where they're going to mark it down. Bengals and the Houston Oilers. Alan Pika is now in the ball game. He is number 20 and he is in motion and Moon is back to throw. And he drops it off to the right side to Heisman. And he will go to the 33-yard line. Sticks to the secondary. And they do. The pass is then dropped. They're going to rule the play dead. Gibbons with the reception. The other way, however, right on the seam, they found the There's area. There's the reception. He's down as soon as contact is made. That's no right. fumble. That's Good right. call by the officials. But All right when nobody else is around. Right. Here's the draw. Rozier, touchdown. That right side of the Bengal offensive, or the Houston offensive line, a nice kick-out block by Alonzo Highsmith, and there's nothing much for Rozier to do except run over a safety in the middle of the field. Big easy to remember. That's right. Siason <laughs> going deep, Collinsworth. Chris Collinsworth, it was underthrown. They're doing that to try to stop Houston from getting the good jump. They've blocked five punts already. Fourth and 15, pressure again, he gets it away. Duncan on the return at the 35-yard line to the 40, and has 10 yards on the return to the 45-yard line. 13 seconds, that is the time remaining in the first quarter. Gibbons in motion. Second left in the quarter. Down at the Cincinnati 44-yard line. And here's Rozier again. 11, maybe 12 yards. And a first down as the first quarter comes to a close. Rozier on the move. The Oilers in front. Seven to nothing. We'll be back in a moment. Fans are really into it here. And notice how they stand. They have their own television set. They know they're back. Look at these statistics of the first quarter. The Oilers have held Cincinnati to a minus three passing, 12 total yards. Yeah, and the surprising number, 71 yards rushing by the Oilers, all 71 by Mike Rozier. 71 yards in the first quarter. Woo! Moon's pass given. It's going to be about 10 yards, maybe a first down. Eric Thomas pulls him down. as He likes to set up his pass with the run, and so far they've been doing it. Second down and one. First down. Rozier to the 15-yard line. Add eight more yards to his total. He may run for 200 yards today. First down at the 15-yard line. Rozier to the right side. Pops through. He'll score. He does. His second touchdown of the ballgame, his 10th of the year. Cincinnati nothing, here's another look. It's just that little delay. Highsmith, number 32, getting inside, and a nice block. Rozier does all the rest. They had their only first down, then again, three and out. 
a tribute to the Houston defense. Now let's see what the Houston offense does. Moon with good protection, throws it and intercepted. Cincinnati has the ball. Carl Zander with the interception, and that is his first of the year. We are in the ball game of the 50-yard line. And it appeared to me that Moon lost sight of Carl Zander. He was looking downfield to his safety, and Zander kind of surprised him. Xander sneaks up in between. You see that? He was looking downfield to the safety. And that's the reason Eric Thomas was coming across. But it was Xander, number 91, who makes the interception. They have a first down. Nicky Woods. Woods pops through. Has the first down. He goes to the 28-yard line. A gain of 13 yards in the first down. Jeff Donaldson with a tackle. That is only the second first down of the ballgame. Ten minutes have passed. Time for the ticker. Here's Brooks. Breach, his longest this year is 41. His career long is 55, but that was in 79. And he's got it from 45 yards away. And Cincinnati on the scoreboard. It is now Houston 14 and Cincinnati 3. Just under nine and a half left to go, first half. Now Houston from their own 20-yard line, leading 14 to 3. Rogier with two touchdowns. Alonzo Highsmith gets the call. Four yards to the 24. Here we go. Highsmith back to block. First down. Drew Hill spinning loose. Bolter finally makes the tackle. 18 yards. On the defensive end. When you think about it, this is ninth year in the National Football League, and he hasn't been in the Pro Bowl yet. And you look at the numbers, and you look at Crazy George, who agrees with us, of course, that uh, he deserves it. We don't vote. The other players vote. Going deep. Into play. Oh, they caught it. Hayward Jeffries with his first catch in the National Football League throws the football actually but you can't ask for much more from Daryl Smith number 25 but the presence of mind that's wait a minute Charlie we got taken a look at that guy huh oh yeah first catch this year he had seven last year no need to and he come right back with Rozier five yard line give up on Haywood Jeffries but uh, the Oilers don't believe that they like him Second and two at the five-yard line. You got to figure Rozier, because he has scored two touchdowns. He's going to lose some yardage here. The market back to the 13th. Moon does not throw that much to his backs or to his tight end. He always throws to his wide receiver. Almost exclusively. Here would you watch Haywood Jeffries. first touchdown of the year. A week ago, Moon ran this play, the option play. That's what they fake here for a touchdown against the Steelers. Now he pulls it back up. He gets the defensive back Billups to react up to the line of scrimmage. Leaves Duncan open for the touchdown. Nice play. Nice call by Jerry Glanville and uh, June Jones and his staff. Completions, and that's what Houston has wanted to do. Run the football as much as possible to keep the number one rated quarterback off the field. And that is only the third first down in the first half for Cincinnati. Brooks in motion. Good coverage downfield. Esiason is down and a flag is down. The Bengals have been held at 34 yards by his defense. They were down all week long. We talked about that at the opening. Third and 19 for the goal with four wide receivers. Sison rolling left. He's left-handed. Smart play for the quarterback. The intended receiver, it doesn't make any difference. He was throwing it at the feet of the closest receiver, whoever it might be. He was avoiding a loss. The sack was in there. WCMH TV4, Columbus. Sean Jones putting the pressure on. And Curtis Duncan takes the ball at the 40-yard line. He may have a yard on the return. Houston for their own 42-yard line first down. Houston comes back with four wide receivers. He comes out of bounds. First down at the 47-yard line of Cincinnati. To the sideline with the pass. Moving from the shotgun. Dixon with the tackle. 
second and six, 33-yard line. to Drew Hill. Cards out. He's done that three times, including this year. So he's a well within his range. Moon. Moon felt the pressure. Drew Hill was the closest receiver. Jason Buck was going to sack him. Anderson. Maybe he's more comfortable there than in the shotgun. End zone. Incomplete. Hill, the closest receiver, intended receiver, Ray Horton had the coverage, and the field goal team is coming out. And the, this is a situation where the 45-second clock does help the Houston Oilers and or the kicking team because they still have 25 seconds to get this off now. This would be from the 33 and attempt to 43 yards and pieces to hold the back of quarterback. A fake. I think that may have been the signal we saw uh, Sam Weish putting on his head. Be careful, because they may fake it. That's that's his signal to his defense. 43 yards. Tony Zendaya. Well, the clock runs to triple zeros. It is halftime in the Astrodome, and the ovation for the Houston Oilers. They have dominated the first half. They lead 24 to 3. Football fan, um, I, every time chance I get, I come to one of the games, and I'm behind my orders 100%. <laughs> what happened to him last Sunday night against the Steelers? I don't know. We're going to forget about that. <laughs> We're just going to think they're in the house of pain now. That was one little mistake, but uh, they're going all the way to the playoffs. Have you ever considered playing professional football? Uh, not really. You know, I was drafted four years ago by the Cowboys, but uh, I haven't really considered it. I mean, hey, I can run one straight line and get off the field without being touched <laughs> and make good money, so that's okay. And Denver all tied for that lead in the West at 7-7. That was this morning, and that tie is going to be broken now. And just slugging his way along is James Brooks, just pulling everybody with him, including... <laughs> Brooks to the 44, gain of three. Short yardage, do you go to Icky Woods? You do? No, a fake and deep, and it is complete to Tim McGee. Watch him. It's in his left hand. Puts it behind his hip. That's that old thing they used to do about 40, 50 years ago, but he does it extremely well. Why did that you look at me? When, why did you look at me when you said 40 or 50 years ago? And then he's got man-to-man -man coverage. McGee against Patrick Allen, number 29. Allen gave him the inside of the field. I can't believe That's a shocking thing. It's echoing down. Here's Brooks to the outside. He'll never get there. Icky Woods to the nine. So, Charlie, I think you, I, I think you kick it through and get the points up on the board. They need him. 27-yard attempt. It is good. And the score is now 24 to 6. Flags are down. One of the officials has lost his cap. Now that's a mismatch when the official is trying to push Joe Walter away at 6'6", 290 pounds. 79 blue. Somebody, somebody better close a mic. 79 blue. That's Ray Childress. And they're going to apply the penalty to the kickoff. So he gets the football on the right side of the line, but everybody blocks along the line on the left. Munchak, 63. Davis, number 77. And that allows uh, Rozier to make his own cut. The back to the other. He's done it so much, it has to be set that way. Yeah. This is Pinkett. And he is stopped first by Jim Scow. Surprised if they ran it. Now I would. <laughs> <laughs> Given. Cincinnati 36. Oilers on top, 24 to 6. And here's Pinkett. To the 32-yard line. It'll be second down and six. A gain of four. Crumry making the tackle. Back into the offensive set. He's the remaining back. 
Gibbons in motion. Running the option, you've seen that a couple of times. This one not effective at all. This is within his range. Is it ever? Throwing it up now. Then you then you wait till the fourth. Then you wait another two and a half minutes. For the size that you can. Throwing back underneath the coverage to the tight end Holman, Rodney Holman with the reception. He'll pick up the first down. Was did he have a man open deep? Oh, Tim McGee was so wide open, it was incredible. Pass is complete, a fumble. Houston will have the ball. Are they going to rule the fumble? Yes, I believe so. Fighting for the extra yardage. He really actually lost a couple of inches and then lost the football as well. Zone coverage. You see the linebackers split away. And there's where you lose it trying to get upfield. And is it a fumble? Yes, yes it, it certainly is, is. The second hit coming in by Meads is what jarred loose for Allen to pick up. The Cincinnati 39-yard line first down. Moon wants to cash in. Diving reception by Duncan at the two-yard line. Man coverage down the sideline. He's one of their four wide receivers into the game. Oh, wow. Winning on the court. What a tremendous catch. The problem with trying to catch the football under these circumstances, when you lay out like that, if your elbows come down and hit the turf, the ball pops out. Moon, a happy man with a tremendous throw right on the money. The disconsolate Chris Collingsworth. For Curtis Duncan, that's a highlight film reception. We have a timeout. Warren Moon going to the sideline. Second down goal to go at the three. Here's Rogier. He can make it. Worth fumble that was recovered by Patrick Allen is what started it all. 14:52, time remaining in the ball game. Rozier 121 yards, 20 more yards, and he will reach a thousand yards in this in this season. Houston 34, Cincinnati six. We'll be back with the kickoff in just a moment. Fourth. Here it is, Houston 34, Cincinnati 6. Here's Brooks to the right side. Out to the 25-yard line. Great deal of change from what we saw at, uh, at the half, Charlie. The time of possession still strongly on the side of the Oilers. Totally off their game today. Second down, short yardage. Icky Woods breaks the tackle. And he moves to the 39-yard line. He'll pick up the first down, a gain of 14 yards. Patrick Allen down. Here is Brooks, and he goes out of bounds at the 48-yard line. That's good for nine. It'll be second down and one. Robert Lyles. Lose this football game. It's not over for home field yet. Icky Woods breaking tackles. Make uh, much of an impact today. First down at the 44-yard line. Eddie Brown in motion. Brooks. To the 39-yard line, gain of five. It'll be, the weather is going to, it's going to be cold. Icky Woods. Woods has the first down to the 30 and then to the 23-yard line. To the bingo. This is their personality. And they've been taken out of that personality by great play of the Oilers. Intercepted. Eugene Seal. And Esaias and pulls him down. Seal number 53, bottom right part of your screen, five nine and a half. The shortest linebacker in football today plays a lot in special teams. <laughs> Watch what he does to Boomer. He, I like the he head fake. Straight arm Boomer socks and was gonna. Warren Moon.
Stone actually throws this to the wrong side of Drew Hill. Hill makes a tremendous adjustment. He's turned one way, then turns back to the other side and still has the wherewithal to make the catch and stay into the corner of the end zone. He's now got 10 touchdowns on the season, and that is a career best for Drew Hill. And add one more point for the Oilers. You got to wonder about the psychological effect by beating, being beaten this badly by uh, the Bengals. They still have the shot to get home field advantage throughout the playoffs despite this loss. But tonight and tomorrow. The Shyson, who is a left-handed quarterback, rolls right in the end of the sideline. A, a team that is a playoff contender in New England today, he's got them going in the right direction. Brooks is going to lose a yard. They stay with the run, and this time it is Stanley Wilson, and Al Smith makes the tackle. Yes, that is crazy, George. I think he was a former announcer. <laughs> First down, Cincinnati at their own 34-yard line. Still on the ground. Here's Brooks to the 40. So be sure to join us again tonight here on NBC. Sison rolling left, sets, throws. He goes to McGee. And just a moment ago, while we're away on commercial, uh, Icky Woods going to the locker room. This is on tape. We do not have a report. He wasn't limping. Third down opportunity. Here's the draw. Does not fool anyone. Jennings brought down by Doug Smith. A loss of three to the 50-yard line, where it will be fourth down. This is no surprise. Mike Rogier now with 126 yards rushing. Three touchdowns over 100 yards in the first half. Bud Weiser will make a contribution to the United Way on behalf of all the MVPs selected in today's game. In, inside, and we'll try to get a report to you as soon as we can, if we get one before we get off the air. Piece to throw. And it is incomplete. You need this after. Yeah, I'm looking forward to working with Gail on uh, the 2nd of January as our yes. bold coverage gets kicked off. There's pressure, and he barely gets it away. And it goes out of bounds. So Cincinnati will have good field position with 2.29 remaining. And they trail 41 to 6. All forms. Mm -hmm. The size was not effective. Mm -hmm. The running game, of some of those numbers are misleading as Jenkins gets uh, pushed out of bounds. Some of those numbers misleading because Woods got a lot of those yards, 71 on the day in the fourth quarter when uh, Houston was in that prevent defense. Better known as Spider-Man here. Working with the youth of Houston, drug prevention. Stanley Wilson, Eugene Steele with a stop. And that is the last snap of the ball game now. Official congratulations all around. For the Houston Oilers and Jerry Glanville. Yes, he's coming out uh, to shake hands with Sam as he did last week. He's done quite a with job. With Chuck Noll, the head coach of Pittsburgh. Exactly. Yeah. And he's done quite a job, Jerry Glanville did, uh, getting his team back after a devastating loss as it has been described. And now that is the challenge that faces Sam White. 